Last time we talked about uh, forms. Uh, now I want to follow up on that by talking about reports. Uh, I just want to sort of um, quickly go through. M many of the things are very this, very much the same. So um, in class, we've talked about two different kinds of reports, a detail level report and a sort of grouped hierarchical report. And I want to make one of each. Okay, so if we talk about employees, right, um, you know, we may want to uh, see just sort of a list of employees and the departments that they're in, right? So I don't want to put sort of too much stuff here. You know, I could obviously put in, you know, birth dates and just about everything else that I wanted to, but we want to keep this straightforward. So, um, you know, I'll probably want to put in employees and department name, right? And, uh, you know, it realizes that you're pulling in things from different um, tables. So it's going to give you some options, right? Do you want to see the department name as sort of a, a grouped heading? Um, you know, in this case, we really don't, right? I want the detail report. So, you know, I just want to see it like that. Uh, you, you can add grouping at this level if you want to. I, I, I don't really need any grouping here. It's not what we need. Um, you know, I can pick my sort. So, you know, maybe I would want to, for an employee list, I probably want to sort of sort by last name and then you know, maybe first name, right? And uh, I tend to like landscape. Um, it's not crucial. You should experiment. But uh, I find landscape to be, um, you know, a little bit easier uh, for reporting. And then, you know, I like to give it some sort of, you know, marker. So, you know, uh, oh, nope, we're doing reports here. So we're going to say, you know, RPT. And, you know, then I might give it a name like employee list or something. You know, something, something meaningful, right? And we'll almost certainly want to modify the report design. Okay, and, you know, just make some changes here. Uh, largely, this is very similar to form, so I, I don't want to spend too much time, you know, on all these details. But, uh, you know, we've got headers here. One thing that's sort of different between, uh, different in reporting from sort of forms is the levels become much more important, okay? All we really have here is just sort of, you know, a, a few different kinds of things. We have uh, last name, first name, you know, employee ID, and department name. Um, but when we make sort of a grouped hierarchical report, you'll actually see that we can add, you know, many, many other kinds of grouping and other kinds of information. So it's important that you keep that in mind, that the levels here will actually really start to matter. Um, you know, and we can sort of uh, do the kinds of grouping and arranging that, you know, we've done in sort of other uh, contexts, right? So, you know, this is a place where, you know, other kinds of things start to matter a little bit more. So in reports, especially, there might be really sort of important layout things that you need to do, right? Notice it's printing the day's date at the, the, pay, the bottom of every page. It's going to print the page numbers here, okay? And, um, you know, this is a place where all of a sudden things like uh, color start to matter a lot more, right? So, um, you know, so for example, I would probably want to um, talk about the properties here, right? Um, you know, format becomes important. So, you know, I may decide that I want to change things like, you know, what the you know, the border color is. I may want to change the font size. I may want to change the font color. I don't want to spend too much time doing those things now. I just wanted to point out that they could be done. Okay, and, and so, you know, you could have a lot of leeway for how you actually adjust the report to meet the needs of, of a user. Okay, so let's take a look at what the wizard does here. And there we go. You know, it's a pretty straightforward report. Um, it's got the employee IDs there. And, you know, we may decide that, and I don't really like the way this is aligned here, and I can sort of space this out differently. So, you know, we may decide that what we want to do is write something like this. Okay, we may want to grab these and pull these out, right? right? That may be, we may we just may not like the way that it's sort of grouped. And, you know, this is all sort of valid stuff for reports. And, and we could keep going. Uh, just a few things to point out. Notice it's alternating the um, background rows, okay, for readability. You can actually adjust how that works if you want. There are... Um, some properties here that will let you do that. So if you click on the detail level and you go to the property sheet, notice there's a back color and an alternate back color. That's what actually determines um, how those things will toggle. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out. And this, 
you know, when I say that I want a detail level report, it's basically this, right? I want to see one record per employee. I may ask you for a bunch of different data, but it is really pretty straightforward. I may have some sort of uh, layout requests and things like this, but for the most part, it's, you know, it's pretty straightforward. And notice it's alphabetized by last name. And, um, you know, it, it's pretty straightforward, nothing, nothing special. Let's uh, sort of make a new version of that report, but we're gonna add some grouping, okay? So we're, this, the grouping gives us a few um, additional capabilities. It lets us start to summarize and aggregate data the same way that we did with the group by clause in SQL. Okay, so it gives us some computational or some computational functionality. And it also gives us some opportunities to improve readability and actually add some analysis and sort of aid the analysis of a person reading this report. Okay, so uh, we're gonna start pretty much the same way. We're going to um, you know, go to the report wizard I'm going to pull in the department name okay, and pull in some of the other fields from employee that I'd like to have, right? So, you know, sort of last name, right? First name. Um, and for now, let's just take salary. Okay, that's sort of a good, a good starting place for us. Um, notice it's already sort of laid it out with department name sort of grouped. Okay, that, I think that's exactly what we would want. All right, and um, notice it's also sort of assumed that we want that level of grouping. That is also what we want. Okay, so that's good. All right, um, and notice now that we have this sort of level, like this sort of these quantitative piece, right? We have the salary there. It gives us these summary options, and I want to spend some time talking about these summary options. There are a few different things that we may want to do with the salary, right? We may want to take the sum of the salary, the average salary, the man, the max, these kinds of things. Uh, for now, let's just talk about the sum. Right, because what we may want to see is we may want to see the sum of the entire salary paid per department. Right, so if you're looking, if you're you know working on a budget or these kinds of things, knowing how much each each department spends on salary may be useful to you. Uh, so let's sort of do that. All right, so we sort of say that there. Um, you know, obviously we have some options for sorting, and you know, last names as good as any. Right, so last name and first name, those will work. Um, again, for this, I like the layout. I like stepped, and I'm a big fan of landscape. I, I think landscape just sort of works. All right, so uh, we'll also sort of talk about. We want to give this a better name, right? So um, we might say something like department salary, right? This will be a department salary report, right? That's probably pretty, pretty good one. Okay, and, and then we get this sort of layout. Now notice. We've got the grouping, right? Because we're going to want to see things at the department level and the detail level, which is per employee. And then we get a footer for the department and then a footer for the page. So we get, in other words, when I call this a grouped hierarchical report, it means that we are grouping and you're seeing the data and, and sort of a data hierarchy. And this is a relatively simple one with department um, sort of summarizing all of the employees within that department. This can become much more complicated, okay? You can actually have several different levels and then with a more complicated example, we may sort of do that. Okay, so let's call this, let's give this sort of a meaningful name here. We'll call it something clever like department salary report. Okay, and um, let's see. You know, notice for the department footer, um, it's going to give you a count and it's going to tell you sort of the number of details. It's going to give you that summary, okay? And then it gives you a grand total at the end of the report. So this is automatically going to build some uh, totals for us, right? Some, some sort of summary information. So I wanna point out here, we have the individual salaries, right? So what each employee makes. Here, we have the sum of the salaries of all of the employees for each department. Then on the bottom, what we have is the grand total or the sum of all of the salaries across all of the departments. Okay, so just like the group by clause where we could actually sort of aggregate information at multiple levels, here we can do the same thing. Okay, so we're getting salary at sort of the detail level and two different summary levels, right? The summary level per department and then a kind of grand total, right? So if we do some adjustments here, right, just to make it a little bit more readable, 
Okay, let's see how this looks. All right, a couple of things to notice. When you get these sort of hash marks, um, it's natural to sort of freak out the first time you see it. You shouldn't really freak out, okay? All it means is that Access does not have enough space to actually show you the full value, all right? So all it means is that we have to go back and make a little bit more space for salary and those fields, right? So I'm going to do something like expand this here, right? And expand this here. And expand this here, right? So once we fix that and we save it, now we get our values, okay? So pretty cool. At this point, you know, you would want to check things like G, you know, this doesn't really align very well anymore, right? So we'll want the salary thing to sort of sort of show up right. So we'll probably come back here and, um, you know, I would probably sort of move this over a bit. Okay. Right, and, you, and you, you have to play with the alignment a little bit to make it sort of right. Right, so let's see how that looks. This is sort of a line probably, right? So, and then maybe that's probably not even quite right. I probably want to pull it back a little bit, right? And make it sort of look reasonable, right? But this, these are the kinds of things that sort of can matter a lot in reporting um, where you, you know, are presenting something that, you know, someone really wants to see. So for example, one thing that you might do in a report is create like an invoice or, um, you know, some kind of like a bill. Uh, in that case, you might have some fairly strict requirements for how this is laid out, and, and Access does a reasonably good job of giving you some options. Okay, notice here it's telling us that for Department ID 1, we're getting six detail records, right? It's telling us that the sum for accounting is, you know, 278,000, right? We would probably want to check our figures, make sure that's right. And we get a different group level total for each department, right? For accounting, for human resources, and for research, okay? And then we get our grand total at the bottom. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is, you know, Access will do this for you in a pretty straightforward way. You may not like this layout. So for example, you may say, well, I don't really want this sum here. I don't like the fact that the sum labels are all here. Like, you, you know, the other things that, if you notice the alternating colors don't work quite well with the grouping, right? So um, you may want to do a whole series of things to actually make this a little bit more readable. Um, and you know you should feel free to do that. So just to you know, give you an example, if you don't really like that this is there or this is not doing anything for you, just get rid of it. Just cut it. And one thing that might make a lot more sense is if you go back to design, one of the controls that you can use is a line. And so you may say, well, you know what I really want there is actually just a line that will separate out what I want to separate out, right? And so, and you, you know, you'll have to sort of play with it to make it look right and to get it into sort of the right format, right? So I think I'm pulling this the wrong way. So I have to sort of do like that a little bit and you'll want it to sort of look straight. And it, it takes a while to sort of get it to look just the way you want it to look. Right, but there we go, that looks like something reasonable, and you, know, you take a look at what it looks like, right? Ah, that might be a little bit more to your liking, right? It's sort of a, a summary line here. Um, and then you may want to have another sort of um, a bigger line beneath the sum, right? So that you could actually sort of see that you're breaking uh, from accounting and going into human resources. And again, you, you can do all this. I don't want to spend too much time um, you know, working through this because it's something, you know, it's actually pretty straightforward, but you can actually control these layouts. So one of the things that I don't really like is I actually like the description of the sum to be close to the value. I sort of feel like that may make a little bit more sense. So if you want to, you can just move them, right? So move these so that they sort of align the way you think that they should. And then, you know, see how it looks, right? To me, that feels a little bit more readable now. Um, you may have a different opinion, that's fine. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that you can do it. You can also decide that you don't like that these things are in boxes and remove the boxes and, and so on and so forth. So you have, you have a lot of options for how to lay this out. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to mention is in addition to all these options for layout, you also have some options that can aid in analysis. So um, if we talk about um, formatting, right? One of the things that you can do, which I think is really cool, is sort of conditional formatting, right? If we think about budgeting, what we may want to see is 
we may want to see uh, particular salaries that are particularly high. So we may say, okay, I want you to highlight in red, right, any particular salary that's greater than, let's call it, 100,000. Right, and what I want to do is I want to see it in red, I want to see it bold, and I want the background to be, I don't know, off gray. Right. And we're going to apply that, and we're going to say okay, and this is, yeah, I would refer to this as just sort of color coding. Um, we want to run the report, and then anybody that's making sort of more than $100,000 is going to show up in red. Okay, now if this were a report that was going to help somebody actually figure out where all of the uh, money for salaries is going, that's the kind of thing that can aid you know, analysis, right? Because I can just look at it and go, oh, yeah, sure, Greg Jones, he's making a lot of money. You know, you got to talk to him. Why? Why is somebody in you know HR making a half a million dollars a year? That may be something that you'll want to find out. Um, that capacity can be applied to several levels at the same time. So. If you decide, well, okay, it's not just individual salaries that I care about. It's also, I want to see what's happening per department, right? Like which department has uh, the most draw on salary, right? So then we may want to say, okay, um, I also want to see where the field value is greater than, um, I don't know, let's pick a number. Let's say, um, you know, 300,000. Right. These are obviously not very realistic numbers, but... Um, you know, it helps. And maybe this time what I want to do is make it red and bold, or actually let's change the color. Let's make it like orange or something. Right, so I make it orange and bold, and I make it sort of a weird background so it really stands out, like something like that, right? That clearly stands out. I'm not saying you would actually do this, but just for the sake of argument. And if we look at the report, Okay, now, sure enough, one of them signs up, right? it sort of highlights. And again, not only does human resources have a problem with the salary of Greg Jones, human resources has a problem as a department, okay? In fact, uh, as a department, they uh, sort of outspend everybody else on salary, including accounting, which has six employees. So this is the kind of thing that, you know, if you, you know, and this is sort of a small form like this, it doesn't seem like it would matter much. But if this report were, you know, 25 or 30 pages long, having even a simple aid could be quite useful. So uh, this is hardly a comprehensive review of the things that we've done with reporting, but it gives you just sort of um, a sense of the kinds of things that you can do, some of the computation. Uh, it helps us sort of review some things that we've talked about and, um, you know, gives us some ways to, uh, you know, think about how we can design systems that people can actually use. I think the last thing that I want to do is talk a little bit about how we bring this all together. Okay, we can see that we've got all these different sort of forms and reports. The typical user um, will want to, this to be sort of somewhat easier, right? So we're going to want to create some sort of menu system for them. Um, the easy way to do this is to sort of take a navigation form that Access lays out for you and just drag and drop the things that you think a user would want, right? So they may want access to that department, right? that employee form, uh, they may want to have access to an employee list, and they may want to have access to sort of this department salary kind of report. And keep in mind, we can uh, change what these things are called, right? So nobody wants to see FRM department, right? So we may want to say something like, um, you know, manage departments, right? And uh, it's also, you know, sometimes you need this to be higher, just make it higher, right? Just adjust it to be what you need. Uh, we also may want to say manage employees. Um, we may want to say, you know, employee list report. And here it may just be department salary report. And so we've created a you know a context where you know we can save it as something like navigation form. And so now we have a context where pretty easily uh, somebody can use this form and toggle between all of the different things that they need, right? They can manage employees, they can look at the employee list, they can get departments, they can manage departments. 
and it's more or less at their fingertips, right? So it's a nice, convenient way to organize things really, really in a straightforward way. If you feel like you need a little bit more control, you can also always create something that, you know, I like to call a switchboard. You know, people might have different names for it. Something that's a little bit more centralized and a little bit more controlled. And I don't want to spend too much time on it because, you know, we sort of talked about it. But just so you get a sense of, you know, what this would look like, okay, you can sort of put in a label that you want, right? So I might put in, you know, call it something clever like switchboard. Right, we'd probably want to make that bolder than it will be here, but you know I'm not so worried about that now. And then we can just drag and drop controls onto it like we would any other form, right? So, you know, I can say, uh, you know, I want this to open a specific form, right? Which form? Department. That'll do. Right, and uh, I want it to show all the records, and I would give it sort of a more specific name. So we could just say, um, you know, manage. Departments. Okay, and we get our button, and then of course we can sort of move the button as needed, right, to centralize it. Okay, we're going to want to save this, so, you know, I'd probably call it something like switchboard. Okay, and um, notice these are just forms. Uh, the navigation form and switchboard, they're, they're just like any other forms, it's just you're using them to do something slightly different, right? We're using this to actually create um, something that will organize all of the components in the database so that a user can sort of find what's needed in the database relatively easily instead of having to hunt and peck through tables, forms, reports, and, and we haven't even done any queries, right? So in the databases that we make in class, these lists get really, really long. We're trying to make it easier than that for the users, right? So a couple other things to note, if you go to the property sheet here, Okay, we'll probably, if we go to the form, the property sheet for the form as a whole, um, we can actually control the way that this sort of pops up, right? So one thing that I like to do for these, I like to make them pop-ups, okay, which means that the user can actually control where this thing sits, right? So when you run it, okay, it becomes sort of something that you can just move over to the side, which I actually really like. I, I find this sort of useful. There are other ways to think about what to do with this, but when you click Manage Departments, it's right there, right? And you can sort of jump in and get to work. So it lets you create like sort of a nice menu system um, that you know somebody somebody who really uses this a lot could actually toggle between different functions and use the things that they want to. Uh, one last thing to keep in mind: if you really want to create something that's really easy for the user, so that they sort of see an environment that's really consistent to them, there's one other trick you can do. Um, if you come in here and you go to options, right? Um, if you look through these options, you'll see something like current database, right? And you'll see something called display form. You can actually pick a form that's automatically loaded when the database starts. So let's say that what I want my user to see automatically is this navigation form, right? Like I, I, when, I, when the application starts, I want that form to come up. I can say, okay, right? It tells me you gotta close it, all right, that's fine. So I'm gonna close the database, right? And when I reopen it, it automatically brings up the navigation form. This kind of stuff is really, really useful um, because it creates a really nice system for users that they don't have to worry too much about where things are you know, they can drop that to the side so that the whole screen is basically for them to do their analysis. And, um, you know, they, they can just function on their job instead of being distracted by the technology. And that's really what we're going for. We want to create technology that helps people do their jobs and complete tasks and lets them see information in a way that's helpful to them so that they can do more of their work and worry less about the technology. I think, you know, in other words, we want the technology to serve the human being who's running it. Okay, and we don't want to have the human being spend all of their time, you know, wasted on technology that doesn't work very well. So try to create forms, reports, and menus that meet the needs of your audience.